Good evening and welcome back to tonight's regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education following our organizational meeting. Uh, with so many new people in the audience, I'd uh, please ask everyone to turn off their cell phones and also stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, I'd ask our new secretary, Ms. Baker, to read the roll. All righty. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President oh, Branstad. Here. This is not changed. The next one's incorrect. Yeah, Secretary <laughs> Baker, I'm here. Member Gorton is absent. Member Frizee. Here. Member McFarland. Here. And Treasurer Singer. Here. We again have a quorum. Um, this, we'll move into consent agenda. If you'll look at tonight's list on the consent agenda, it's approval of the minutes from the last meeting, a staff member resignation, payment of our school bills for the month of December and November, a uh, legal invoice uh, to be paid to, as Mike pointed out in the last meeting, of 600 some dollars to Secrets World on the Adair litigation, uh, true to $600 of law firms and another $1,800 of law bills of true. Um, any additions or deletions from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll accept a motion to accept the consent agenda items. I move we accept consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.4. Support. support. We have support. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, at this point, um, we have a request to address the board, but before we open it up to the request to address the board, I've asked Mike to comment on some subject tonight beforehand. Yeah. We received a number of emails, and I think a few people are here to talk about the uh, major change proposal on world language to go forward. But after reading some of the emails as I received them and the board received them, I thought it was important that we clarify some things that I think people have uh, maybe misinterpreted in there as well. You know, this plan really is a transition plan um, based on Midland Public Schools and where it's going, maybe like our facility proposal and, uh, where, with our transition to a little smaller district and where we're going in order to still off offer our kids lots of opportunities, which is something that's made Midland Public Schools kind of special. And so how do we continue to offer um, a wide array of world languages? Um, you know, right now, the, the probably the most popular ones are in our state or Spanish and many people forget um, sign language might be the second largest in our state of Michigan. Uh, Mandarin is a fast growing one. Uh, French and German have been traditional languages um, but we still certainly also have students who are interested in, in, in the Arabic style languages and so um, that transition is the push we know is to add Mandarin and to make that program grow and, and, and the Mandarin's going to grow, obviously, in, in our society to go forward. Right now, Mandarin and some of those are still offered, and they're offered through the online blended world. And so in the future, as we transition uh, and we get smaller, the face-to-face -face side of it is going to kind of change on what we can do. You're going to have two high schools. We're committed to two high schools, probably one being nearly 1,000 or 1,100 students, the other one being 12 or 13 when it hits bottom. Um, how do we continue to do that? Well, it's the blended online world, and, and, and that's not a bad thing. It, it's a good thing. I can see a day where we're offering um, a language at both campuses in the same period. So the teacher teaches a day or two at Midland High, meets the students at Dow High a day or two, and then they meet in the online virtual world, the blended world as we go forward. And so this plan was really developed to be a transition plan because right now we're getting small and it's hard to offer all those courses as we go forward. And um, if you see in there, it's built as a transition plan. There is nobody being affected next year who's currently taking a foreign language in the public schools. It would be the incoming seventh graders who are, who are affected and their world is going to look different here in the Midland Public Schools. Um, they're, the, they're the first secondary class that's in that 515, 525 range of students that we have. Um, some other things that have driven um, the, the language issue is we now, this year, um, have 
um, well actually it was passed this year, will next year have Michigan Merit Curriculum Change, which allows students to use a different course, different courses, in place of taking two years of world language. That's most likely going to be um, 25, 30 percent of our students are going to take advantage of some of those options and not take two world years of world language. And so then that number will dwindle. And so we have to have the foresight to look now and figure out what that transition plan is going forward. Is this the final, the plan that we have in today's, today's spot, the final plan? No, it's going to continue to transition. And we, we're not sure where that's going to go, but my guess would be Mandarin is going to be a major player in that point. Can, our demand for Mandarin continues to go up. Once it gets to a, a large enough com, a demand, we easily can hire a teacher. Right now, if we hired a teacher, it would be how hard to fill that teacher's uh, five out of six period schedule. But someday you can see where that easily can happen as well. Well, that will probably draw some students from the other language programs. And as they get smaller, how are we going to offer those? that blended online world would become some of the options as we go forward. So I see where we can still continue to offer our students lots of options, but it is going to look different, and this was a plan to try to address that. So it's not a plan, I kept hearing, this is a plan that would limit student choices. I think it's a plan that's going looking forward and saying, how do we continue to offer choices in this fastly changing world, Midland Community Schools, is changing, our size of our student population is changing in both high schools. How do we do that going forward? Okay. And we'll discuss that more when we get to the agenda item. Thank you. And at that point, we'll open up to requests to address <coughs> the board. And if you do come to the board, we ask people to keep the five minutes so that we don't take all night and everybody gets a chance to speak and also to state your name and school attendance area. We have the mic Hi, my name is Nisha Patel, and I am a junior at Dow High School. First, before we begin, we would like to thank you for allowing us to speak tonight and taking time out of the agenda to hear our voices. So it was recently brought to our attention that, as Mr. Shero said, there are going to be dramatic changes to the foreign language program at Midland Public Schools. As a fifth-year French student and have taken French for the past five years through solely MPS, this has troubled me deeply and many of my peers. So therefore, as president of French Club and a foreign language student for the past five years at Dow High School, solely through MPS, I would like to represent many of the voices and concerns that have been brought to my attention. First, I would like to discuss my personal experiences and the benefits that I have reaped from having French specifically taught through MPS the way it has been taught in the previous years. Before studying French, I was already bilingual. So I already understood the value of knowing another language and being taught that on a daily basis through individual understanding with the teacher. In this case, it was my parents. But after going through the French program and after only having four years of learning French, I was able to go to France this summer and be able to fluently communicate with many of the native Francophones that were living there. That impact showed me how important the French program was and how well taught it was. That's one of the reasons why I believe that it is imperative to keep this French program alive and not change the way it is being taught. MPS has done a great job exposing French students to the culture and to the IB curriculum. This specific program has taught students to adapt the language and culture and carry oneself with respect and understanding of the core IB values that are being taught not only in the foreign language programs, but also in various other IB classes and AB classes, including IB History of the Americas, ranging all the way to IB Physics. I credit, one of the, I credit much of this success to the incredible teachers that ha I have been able to work with through the IB French programs, specifically my French teacher. This rigorous program has been able to push me through to my limits along with my peers. Now, looking at the numbers of the French classes, it looks like they're dwindling, as if it's not as appealing. But it's solely because of the rigor of the program itself. But that's ex if you look at the success level of the students and their IB and AP test scores, it is clear that the program is extremely successful. And therefore, by removing it or changing it in any way, you could be demeaning the level of those test scores and in future possibly harming them. Though all the foreign language programs hold their individual values, I haven't taken German or Spanish, so I can only speak on behalf of the French program. I do, however, have a passion for the French language and culture and believe this program is vital 
to the well-rounded curriculum that not only Ivy Diploma candidates deserve, but also AP students deserve. It is clear that desire to learn more about the French language culture exists and is growing at an exponential rate. Specifically at Dow High, in the past year, French club participation has increased by 400%, from merely 10 people to 40 members on average per meeting. Now, this is not only French students, but ranges from Spanish, German, male, female, upperclassmen, and lowerclassmen. And some of these students, about 50% of them, have never taken nor desire to take the French class. It just shows that there is a desire to keep the French language alive. And this is not possible if we don't have a strict French program at Dow High School. The French curriculum has inspired dozens of French and Spanish students at Dow High to completely reinvent the idea of French club. Now, even though French club and the French program class are not directly connected, without French club, without, excuse me, without the French classes, it would be not possible to have the French club. Therefore, you would not only be affecting the students that take the French classes, but also the students who are part of the French club. Now, I'd like to talk about the long-term impact that I believe we will be having by making this dramatic change. In particular, offering the French language as a foreign language option to middle and high school students in the form that it is currently at is critical in order to offer well-rounded options in this area of education. But additionally, by eliminating the, this level of French education, you're cutting out one of the most widely used languages on a global scale. In particular, French is known as a language of diplomacy. It is the second most, uh, second most widely spoken language in the world and is used in the United Nations, NATO, International Red Cross, and various other uh, international committees and organizations around the world. But one of the main reasons why MPS can't afford to eliminate this program is due to the connection to the IB curriculum. In the past few years, there's been a major push for IB diploma candidates and for the IB curriculum to grow in MPS. By minimizing the value of the French program, you're demeaning not only the value of the diploma, but also the value of the students who would like to get the diploma itself. That's why I personally believe why the French program is so vital to the foreign language curriculum at Dow High School and in MPS. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Elizabeth Templeman. Um, I also go to Dow High School, and um, I am a junior, and I am also um, in my fifth year of um, French class. Um, I just want to talk about my own personal experiences with um, taking French class. Um, I fell in love with the French language. I would see it in movies, and I just I loved the fluency. I loved the culture that came with it. And we learn a lot about that in the French class. Now, um, I fell in love with it around sixth grade. And at the time, I was restricted to only taking Spanish class. And that bothered me a lot. So I wanted to get a head start because I knew I could take it the next year in seventh grade. So I, um, I got a tutor. And I started tutoring one-on-one -on -one with a um, French teacher. And though it helped me and I had a head start in the class, it's not the same as talking one-on-one -on -one with uh, my peers in the class and having a teacher there explain things to me and to my peers because I could have a, a, a connection with all my students and we're all, uh, all of my peers and um, we're all learning it together. And I found that in French class, I gained a lot of confidence in speaking. I didn't talk a lot in the first couple years of my French class and um, with the vigorous, um, the pushing that my teachers um, had uh, brought in the curriculum of French had helped me not only speak in French class, but also in other classes. And with this routine of constant um, studying, I was able to um, do on other classes too. Um, I felt that with this pushing, I, uh, I, I thought that I would have to, uh, I would have to um, Using other classes, classes to. Um, I apologize. Um, I have to use it in other classes to get the grades that I wanted, and I feel that it was it has become very important to me. And I'm also a representative of French Club, and um, the only reason that I joined French Club is because because of the French class. We even have students that don't speak French in the French class of uh, French Club, but. Um, they love the culture, they love the language, and just um, getting, uh, absorbing all of that is, um, it's just, it's fantastic. And I love the language overall, and that is my own personal thoughts. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good evening. Um. <coughs>
Good evening. Uh, my name is Josh Wekeser. I am also an 11th grader at Dow High School and in my third year of French. Um, I'm vice president of the French Club Board. And um, I would just like to uh, share my own experience as well. Uh, I started French Club, or I started fr the French class my freshman year at Dow High. Uh, I came from St. Bridget Catholic School and I had only had the um, option to go into the Spanish program. They had it for I first grade through sixth grade is what was required. And um, I didn't have the choice of any other foreign languages. So um, on coming in my uh, freshman year at Dow High, I was able to either join um, German, French, uh, Spanish, or various um, online uh, foreign language classes. So um, essentially, I got uh, involved in French club last year. And uh, near the end of the year, I put my name in for uh, to be elected to the board. And I was chosen as vice president to lead the, um, the French club through uh, school activities and also through various uh, activities within the foreign language programs. And um, the French program has helped me to feel more confident about um, learning another language and going up in front of other people. Also, the public speaking in general has, has helped me a ton. Um, the ability, the, um, sorry, um, the French program has also given me uh, um, a, uh, a little bit of a, a direction to look forward to in high school when it comes to foreign language. I, after my sixth grade, I hadn't really seen foreign language as a, an important, uh, uh, an important uh, goal in my life, and so. Uh, as I as I moved forward into the French program, I realized that um, I could take French one my freshman year, uh, French two my sophomore year, um, French three my uh, junior year this year, and then next year I would be able to uh, go into uh, IB French or French four, and so it gives uh, students the opportunity to broaden their um, to broaden their their really their education in foreign language and in the French program into really. Uh, helping out the GPA and going into, as Nisha said, the, I, the I, IB diploma, um, uh, uh, IB diploma candidacy. Uh, it allows you to really just take your foreign language skills and and take them with you when you graduate high school. So, um, I I understand that um, the French program is uh, uh, it's kind of losing some of its popularity at, in some areas, but at the same time, um, it's growing back. It's, it has lost uh, popularity, but it's growing back. And we've seen this through um, the 400% growth of the French club and that there's various students outside the French class that have joined uh, the French club and, and also uh, shared their enjoyment and their um, participation in, in the French program. So I think it is a very uh, vital and um, a necessary course to be kept at Delhi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, folks. Anybody else like to address the board this evening? Ms. Redmond. <clears throat> Hi. My name is Ilonga Redmond, and um, um, well. <clears throat> three children in the public school system, and they do take French and German, um, my oldest one. And um, I thought about, I don't want to talk about French or about German. I, I thought about why is the language so important to have in this community? And uh, this community is, extremely diverse. Lots of Europeans are here, lots of Chinese people are here. Um, but Midland has strong connections with Europe, whether they are from Germany or whether they are from France. And the Europeans usually do intend to go back after they have been here for four or five years with the Dow Chemical Company. Um, in Europe, Languages are important. We learn nowadays, in my days, I learned two languages. It was a must. It was not a two-year requirement. It was started 
very strictly with grade five through grade 13, grade seven through grade 13, and now it's grade nine through grade 13. It is a must to know languages. It is not that in the Dao area live the German people, and in the middle and high area live <laughs> the French people. <laughs> you cannot say, oh, over here we offer German, and over there we offer French. When Europeans want to go back, they want their children to know their home language, and they want to know another language, at least one more. Spanish is important, but they come from over there. And we own it as being them being a big part in this community that we should offer both languages in both high schools. With this in mind, I, um, I know that Midland has a shortage on German teachers just in the past year. And it, German has not been taught anymore in all levels at Midland High. I thought about it. Well, first of all, we already see some result of this, that we don't give an importance to language in, in our school district and in neighboring school districts. First thing is always the language that is cut. Well, you will not be able to produce new language teachers. Language cannot be started in college, far too late. Language is not something you just learn in one semester. So if you want to produce citizens that can contribute, then you have to offer languages. For now, I oftentimes when my children come and say there aren't enough teachers or when I talk, to some people, I, I would be glad to help. I say, I could certainly teach a first year language course <laughs> in German. I could teach it in French. I can teach the second year language course in German. But I don't have a license. I teach at Delta College Mathematics. I came to America speaking English. Never thought I would speak English when I was in high school. I was a lousy English student. I had to always balance my grade against something else. I didn't know what for I need to do, but I had to take it. Nobody asked, do you struggle with English? Maybe you should take a lower class. I had no choice. We didn't have lower class. So here I'm already stepping now ahead. I, I do mind um, that that is something I observe. The course schedule gets more and more filled up with survey courses. This takes up your teachers, teaching not quality courses. We cannot ask students, do you struggle with the course? Of course they struggle. They should struggle. I want my children to struggle in, with the course. I want them to learn. Learning means struggling. Don't ask students, are you struggling with this course? Take a lower level. Let them struggle. Let them get a C, but let them take this class. I speak this out of my own experience because I had these in English. <laughs> and I'm here speaking right now in front of you, and I got a PhD in mathematics at the University of Wisconsin. So language is important. And the, a student doesn't know it. If you want to decrease, if you want to decrease the difference between children and come from privileged academic families and those that come from non-academic families, then don't offer survey classes. Don't waste your teachers and your resources on survey classes. I teach at Delta College and I know these are the low-level classes, and they need to be repeated, and that costs money. Make them do it in high school. The real class, the quality class, not a survey class, not a point two class. So why do we need a 
So they in Spanish. We have a good Spanish program. Don't clutter this time up. The money up for teaching a survey of Spanish. <clears throat> so what else did I want to say? I don't know anymore where I am. <laughs> um, so, well, well, well. I guess my time is up, but uh, I've made my point probably. Oh, yeah, no, no, I want to make one more big point. <laughs> so if you are short of teachers today, in German and in English, uh, French, why not trying to connect with the French people and the German people that are here in town and give them an opportunity to get a license for teaching German or French? I am not willing anymore to get an education, to get a teaching degree. I already looked into that. I would have to go to Alma and get a master's degree in German. I don't want to do that much to teach German anymore in high school. I already got my degree in America. And these people have, some of them are teachers in Germany, in France. They have degrees. They are skilled people. Connect, connect with them. Work with the U.S. Department of Education and see what you can work out with them, just like you work with engineers to teach mathematics. So there are opportunities. Make use of them. But if you are short with money and time and scheduling, whatever was mentioned here for reasons why these proposals have been brought forth, um, Colleges will not know, be able to use them. They will be, have to be repeated. It's a waste of money. And tell the parents that too. They don't know that. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the board? No other takers? Go on once. See none. We'll move on to the, the. First of all, everybody, thank you for coming out tonight to speak to us on this issue, and we appreciate the emails we've received. Also, uh, move on to the next item on the agenda, Mike. I'll turn it over to you. We have January shining star presentations, and our first shining star of the month is Elizabeth. Excuse me if I say your no, name wrong. The Wise. I said it correct. I was afraid I, I wouldn't. This is what uh, her nominators had to say about um, Beth. Beth DeWise joined the MPS staff in 1986 as an occupational therapist in the Special Services Department at Ashman School. Mrs. DeWise has worked in many middle public school buildings through the years and with students across all grade levels. Beth earned her undergraduate degree from Eastern Michigan University and her Master's of Arts degree in Educational Technology from Central Michigan University. Beth is a licensed occupational therapist with the State of Michigan. One of the best former supervisors stated, Mrs. DeWise is a valued member of our special services ancillary staff. She brings much experience and expertise to our collective support staff. She's open to new ideas and willing to change her service service delivery as new research points to, to the effectiveness of doing things in new ways. I know she will work with us to meet the challenges of the upcoming school year as we face the shrinking of our resources. Another supervisor stated, Ms. DeWise continues to provide high quality and occupational therapy for students. Her professionalism is beyond a reproach. Ms. DeWise sets high standards for herself and her students and works diligently to achieve these standards. Her dedication and enthusiasm for her profession is evident in all she does. Beth was nominated for the Shining Star Award by an MPS colleagues. Some of their comments include Beth is a true Shining Star staff member. She works hard for, for, for the success of all students. She always has a positive attitude. Beth goes above and beyond every day. She works closely with the teachers on making adaptations to classwork for the students to be more successful. Beth is more than willing to share her knowledge and materials that she has developed with her coworkers. Beth continues to learn new techniques to increase the success of her students by attending conferences and webinars on her own personal time. If anyone in the district deserves recognition for all the hard work and dedication to students as well as fellow staff, it is Beth. Congratulations to Beth. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Chuck comes up. I'm going to read about Chuck. Chuck began his MPS career as a custodian in 1990 in the services division. During the early part of his Midland Public Schools career, he worked as a custodian and assistant head custodian at Dow High. In 2000, he was promoted to head custodian position at Mills Elementary School. Through the years, Chuck has taken different training programs and classes to increase his knowledge and skills in his profession. In 2003, Chuck moved to the position of head custodian at Chestnut Hill Elementary. And in 2007, the head custodian title and responsibility changed to that of building manager. Through his years at Chestnut Hill, Chuck has also had oversight and responsibility for a smaller building as well. Due to the extended absence of an MPS employee, Chuck has been filling in, filling the vacancy of Northeast building manager since this past summer. A former supervisor, Chuck stated, Chuck takes a lot of pride in his buildings. He expects any custodian working in the buildings to take the same amount of pride. His building shines from the first time you walk through the main doors to any room you enter. He is always willing to help anyone who may need him. Chuck was nominated for the Shining Star Award by a number of his co-workers. Here are just a few of their comments. He takes pride in our building's appearance and, wants, and works hard to keep it glowing. Chuck is by far the best custodian that I've worked with in my 19 years here at MPS. Chuck is a hard worker, always smiling and willing to help however he can. He takes care of his problems in a timely manner. He has made our building a better place. Chuck does an awesome job here at Northeast. His work ethics are amazing. Chuck always responds with a kind, respectful demeanor to any request made. This guy is a keeper. I've worked at MPS <laughs> for 20 years, and I've never had such an efficient and just plain awesome building manager. He is incredibly productive, timely, and does everything with a positive attitude. In the short time that he's been here, he has left us with a wow impression. We believe that Chuck Dobtinsky is a shining star. Congratulations to Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's quite a testimony. Well done. Thank you for an outstanding job. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, both of you. Mike? Yep, and now we're on to board uh, recognition. January is throughout the state. Our state is January board recognition month. In front of you, you have uh, a book. As you recall, last year we started. Can we hold it up? Yep, so. a student, that will be a student book that goes into our libraries of each of the elementary schools. In the front cover, it has your names in there. So we give recognition to you for the all the service you give us and, and uh, we certainly have gone through quite a few things in the last few years and we'll continue to so you're earning your service and Patrick's soon to find out of all, all that fun you have as a board member um, but uh, also in front of you have some letters that came from Julie Hyatt's fourth grade students at Carpenter and I think that's the, always yeah, the highlight right? Showing. They're, they're probably they're looking right. at you though. And oh, Julie yeah. actually right. invited me into her classroom this year Ooh. to uh, go see them as your as your only employee of the district, um, <laughs> I, I, I got to go in there and explain what a board member is mm. like and what it is like to work with all of you. So hopefully there's no bad comments in any of those. No, I, <laughs> no, I, I got two <laughs> thumbs up in one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, thank you for all, everything you do, guys. Thank you. It's labor, love, certainly not for the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, folks. We do this voluntarily. <laughs> yeah, if anyone does not know that. We, we vote to triple our pay later tonight. <laughs> um, moving on, thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody, else, for all your support, us as board members. Um, one of the true enjoyments in Midland of being a board member is, is whenever you go out, people want to talk schools. It's a blessing and a curse sometimes. But it also tells you how much they're concerned about the schools, and you're glad to hear those voices and hear that. And uh, it's it's proud to serve a community like Midland in their value of their schools. Moving on, uh, moving to curriculum uh, instruction and assessment, and goes to the subject that we had talked about a lot earlier. So I'm going to hand it over to Mike. Well, actually, it's going to go. I'm going to hand it right over to Mr. Bruton. Okay, I figured you would. The uh, <laughs> experts in these areas. So. So before you tonight, you have three major change proposals that were presented to you back in the uh, December board meeting. The first major change proposal has to do with the IB career program, um, for short acronyms, IBCP. And this major change proposal would introduce a career certification aspect to our diploma program. And this major change proposal includes adding a course called the Approaches to Learning and introduces a new core as takes place with the diploma program. 
and would be implemented over a course of two years. Um, the approximate cost of this major change proposal is $30,000, and with resources being scarce, we very much respect and honor that, and we'll be soliciting only outside funds, not the general fund, for this major change proposal if the board approves it this evening. Um, graduation requirement, major change proposal is also in front of you this evening. This was largely spurred by changes that the legislature brought forth over this past summer and clarified for us further this fall. The proposal in front of you comes from comprehensive committee work that took place over the period of two months and was representative from staff members and administrators across the district. Um, in real short summative language, um, the current math, English language arts, science, and social studies requirements remain as currently established by the Board of Education. The number of credits remains at 22. The two modifications that are included in this major change proposal allow flexibility in two areas. The first area is physical education, where students would be able to opt out of a half credit of physical education, their lifelong fitness course, with the completion of a full year of marching band or an MPS sport. Um, the other flexibility is in the area of world language, where students can complete a second world language course. The first is still mandatory through completing either a full CTE program or an additional VPAA credit, which stands for Visual Performing and Applied Arts. And then the other language proposal, which was the subject of comment tonight, was the World Language Major Change Proposal. And I want to give a little bit more background on this one um, before I give the summation of it. The major reasoning behind the initiation of this major change proposal really was from, I've tried to put it in, in basic terms, there's two trains coming down the tracks, and I think that if we don't address this, we will be in a position where students are going to be negatively impacted, which is something we're trying to avoid. One, um, in every presentation Mr. Sherrill's given, he's talked about our decline in enrollment that's pending. Um, we've said that our enrollment in elementary is stable right now, um, and those smaller classes are coming through. They're about at that seventh grade level of moving through. We anticipate around four to 500 student drop population within the next five years. Right now, our numbers in our level three languages and above are averaging in the 15 to 16 range. With that decline in population, it's probably pretty likely that those numbers will struggle to maintain that level and probably will decrease. In addition, as I just described, with the graduation requirement major change proposal, students will have the ability to choose to opt out of their second year of foreign language. We can't put a pinpoint um, on the exact number or percentage of students that would be, but we could probably guarantee there's going to be some that are going to do it. So with those two factors contributing to already low numbers, we saw on the horizon a very probable chance that there would be a pathway for students that would be cut off. And in terms of that, you would probably have a course that would have a request in eight or nine or 10 students, which in today's master scheduling just isn't feasible, and we would be able to offer that course pathway. So it would be very likely that a student would take a language sequence, get themselves up to a certain level, and then have that level stop for them, and then be either too forced to go online or forced to travel across town. Um, I think it would be very naive of us to believe that this would not happen in the very near future considering those factors. So we put a committee together to try and come up with a solution to lessen the probability that we would have the negative impact on students. And so out of the committee came the major change proposal that's in front of you. This major change proposal does consolidate the language offerings by side of town. That was done based on a data analysis of the past four years of world language enrollments um, in all four buildings. And the numbers were very, very um, direct in pointing that there is a higher enrollment of German at Jefferson and at Dell High, and there's a higher enrollment of French at Midland High and also at Northeast. So by consolidating those languages, as Mr. Sheriff pointed out at the beginning, we are still maintaining choice, where we're offering both of those languages in the district rather than just cutting one entirely, where students will have the option to travel across town if they so choose. If students don't want to travel across town, we are um, behind the scenes putting our treadmill on sprint in the world of blended and virtual learning to try and get our instructors taught and trained and ready to go. So when we are ready, we still will have highly qualified staff in both language areas still employed by MPS and ready to be able to teach those languages to students. So um, that is the origin of the World Language Proposal, the reason why that committee 
came about with that decision, and I'm open to any questions you have before moving. And Brian, rather than a question, can you expound on the process of uh, who was involved, how, et cetera, this all came about then? Sure. Um, the World Language Committee met um, three times over a period of two months, and on that committee were representatives of all four buildings, administrators um, from all of the buildings, and each World Language was represented as well, too, on that committee. From that committee... By a teacher. When you say represented, you mean a teacher? That's correct, okay. yes. From that committee, the major change proposal was taken to the agenda group. Um, once it got past the agenda group, it was taken to the internal major change proposal committee. That's where a group of educators from throughout the district come together, are presented the major change proposal, and they have to vote um, from a zero to a four, zero being don't like it at all, four being strongly support it. Um, that received a perfect score in the internal major change proposal committee. From the major change proposal committee, it then went to the CIA committee, the subcommittee of the Board of Education. From the CIA subcommittee, it then went to this Board of Education in December. And from December until now, it's been up for its 28-day review period. Thank you. Um, can you can you also talk to because we we've talked about that we're limiting choice and we alluded to it earlier. But not only do we offer those languages, but we also already give students a chance to do some online learning and that right there a lot of students are taking advantage of that so when you talk about numbers in the classroom that's something that has already pulled some kids out of you know the languages that we have sure. taught but we do that because we are offering choice yeah. and as Mr. Sheriff pointed out that the world of online virtual learning it's a way to provide choice in an era where resources are finite um, and so a, a statistic I've shared with many people Currently, right now, we have 43 students in MPS taking online languages. They're taking 19 separate courses that represents seven different languages, all the way from Mandarin to American Sign Language to Japanese to Latin. So we have many students that are taking advantage of the online world, and we believe that it's going to expand exponentially in time to come. Well, I know when we talk about maintaining two high schools and not eliminating opportunities for kids that we knew on the edges as we get smaller it's going to be tougher and tougher and we always envisioned and I have a very publicly state that online blended opportunities of the future how we're going to manage a lot of this you know when, when uh, versus uh, a mega building and it won't be everything that way but there'll be stuff on the edges that does that so that fits the model of, of where we're going forward um, so any other questions Can I comment? Sure. <clears throat> when I think about online blended learning, I, I think we have a long way to go. I mean, it, it's a neat option, especially when we're talking about our enrollment decreasing and our revenues are getting smaller. Uh, and also, like you said, having options for students. But um, right now, I, I just feel like there's a, a lot of opportunity for growth in getting those online virtual learning um, up to snuff. You know, I, I take I would I would agree in some courses, Pam, but not others. Um, Michigan Virtual University courses are, are incredibly high quality, and predominantly um, the foreign language courses come from Michigan Virtual versus um, Edgenuity. Edgenuity, which is more of a uh, computer curriculum versus a a blended learning course where there's an instructor there. Michigan Virtual is a, a, a highly qualified, highly certified instructor on that piece of it. I would agree with you that we're behind and have a long way to go um, on, on virtual online and we have to get with it because um, we are behind other public school districts on that option. And I don't know how many of you are aware, and we've shared with you before, there's a state catalog of courses that our students are allowed to take anywhere in the state. and. Many of them are offered by other high schools in there as well. And if they chose to take a foreign language course from downstate somewhere, uh, they, they have the right to do so, and we have the right to pay, we would have to pay for that. We need to get online and offer this option, not only in foreign language, but in lots of courses, because we have parents and students who are looking for that choice. And have that choice. And have that choice. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? No. You know, I'd comment back to Mike's initial comments. You know, when I look out long term, like we're supposed to be doing, I'm I've, I'm sitting there going, what languages can we offer? What language should we offer in the in the light of diminishing resources and student population? 
and how do you maximize opportunity at minimal cost? And the blended online is going to have to be a route that helps get us there. Not every time, but helps get us there. And learning to do that with multiple languages, to learn if there is a critical mass of want by certain students and parents. For instance, does Mandarin become very uh, popular and big? Then we get a critical mass. We can evaluate how we offer that tomorrow versus how it would be an offering today, if you want to call it that. And it allows us, that mechanism allows us to experiment and move forward uh, with things without going out and, and hiring, trying to find a Mandarin teacher when you have no demand. Um, how do you provide lang multiple languages you're currently offering in multiple buildings when you're not there? And so this whole migration plan, this is a, more of a first step in a right. undefined endpoint, but the defined part of the endpoint is there will be more languages offered and there will be a different way of delivering it. And that's what we're talking here is delivery, not the language, the delivery mechanism. Mm -hmm. and, and the deliveries are going to change as we go forward. Like it or not, they're going to change because, as Mike said, others are going to offer that opportunity for delivery differences. And probably better than what we're, our initial step is, which is the option for those incoming seventh grades to take, if they have that choice, for the one to take across town. Um, that, that's like a patch to where we're needing to go, to your point, Pam. We need to get better in order to get there, and we need to get our t teachers training up, up to there, because if we had them ready, we wouldn't be offering the cross-town patch. We'd be doing the truly the blended patch right now. Right now. Good point. Excellent point. Any other comment or questions? Um, I guess before we, we go to the vote, which is what's going to happen next. Um, just to, to give some credence to our speakers tonight, uh, I, I thought they were very impressive. Um, they expressed what I thought uh, were legitimate concerns. Mm -hmm. um, the students, Nisha, Elizabeth, and Josh, um, were all concerned with public speaking, uh, but I thought they were very articulate. Mm -hmm. um, they expressed their uh, concerns very eloquently. They were well thought out. and. Um, I think they're going to do just fine with public speaking, and I wanted to let them know that I appreciated them coming here tonight. Uh, Ms. Redman um, also did a very fine job expressing her concerns, and I wanted to tell her that I appreciate that, although they've, they've all since left, uh, her suggestions in moving our language program forward. Yes. Yes, yeah. very good points. Uh, yes, very good points. Particularly Ms. Redman's comment on survey courses is something yes. to give us a little pause. Sure is. Mm -hmm. We'll have to think through that. To the point on survey courses, since you brought it up. Can't let that go. The survey courses really occurred when the state went to mandatory two-year language. requirement for all students. And so you have to remember that, all students. So when we have LD students, when we have students of that caliber who now have to get through two years of foreign language in addition to their four core subjects, that's where survey came about from. Yep. Good point. Any others? Seeing none, I guess we'll go into voting on the uh, major change proposals. I'll accept a motion. I guess it's just 5.1 in its entirety versus each increment. Mm -hmm. um, I will move that we adopt uh, motion 5.1 as outlined in the agenda and discussed here tonight. Support. A motion and support. Any other further discussion? We've, we've kind of beat it. Well, let me put in my two cents on the physical education one. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of parents that will be very happy. Um, that the state has changed that and will be able to use other options for the um, lifelong fitness class. Um, as all these other Michigan requirements came in with the four years of math and um, the two years of foreign language and some of the other things, it's been hard for a lot of high school kids to fit into their schedule. Um, if they wanted to take band, a lot of them have been pushed to take a seventh hour just to fit in some classes like this. And there has been a lot of talk amongst the um, you know, athletic population of we're already putting in hours and hours of, you know, and there's a lot more to lifelong fitness than, you know, I play football or I swim, but um, th this is another way. I think it gives people some options. So I'm glad to see the state um, allowing that change. Any other comments on any of those? Uh, uh, yeah, I've got one more comment, sorry. Um, you know, people may see us sitting up here and think it's easy for us just to make a quick decision, vote yes or no, but quick. it's not easy. And, and Brian and the administrative team have put in countless hours uh, researching this and, and they, the vetting process um, and the reasons for changing this I, I think are sound. 
and, and for the reasons outlined uh, by Brian, uh, that's why I'm in support of this of this change. Yeah, that both of them spent a lot of time with me today too, because yeah, these don't we don't just get stuff and read through it and go along. We we are a group that questions things also. And and I will share that. Uh, on the stump on the millage, one of the things we talk about is the, the middle and way of writing the decisions. And uh, on one hand, it's, it tends to be fairly broad and inclusive. On the other hand, it tends to be very slow and deliberate to get there. And, and oftentimes people will see things come to us and think they just popped up for the first time. I rarely see anything like this that hasn't been at least three and four months and sometimes a year yeah. to get where it is with God knows how many other facets. So I'm, I'm comfortable about the process, and that's why I asked the question about the process, Brian, is to be comfortable with the process that there was enough input along the way uh, as we went along. And Jerry, I'd just make a simple comment as well. I guess being um, one of the more elder board members here and, and watching all five of my children go through Midland Public Schools, we have experienced personally many changes you know, that are similar. They're emotional when it impacts your family. Um, but you know what, we all survived and I, I was just talking about this the other day, I see Midland Public Schools even in the midst of financial difficulties and, and um, lower numbers, et, et cetera, I really believe that we are a better school district over the course of my parenting children in Midland Public Schools for you know 25 years because education is changing and it's changing so fast now. Just you're treading water sometimes just trying to keep your head above and uh, so I applaud everyone and thank them for it. It's a constant um, thinking process and meeting and looking what's best for our kids and what opportunities are there. So I would just like to share that they are difficult decisions and no, no one t makes these um, lightly but our, ki our kids are resilient and I believe as a board and as a school district in a community uh, we just keep improving. We will offer our children choices, and for some of us, uh, sometimes those choices and those changes are difficult, but we, we do a good job. Because they're different, mm -hmm. <laughs> is all. And Mike, you said it earlier, and no one's um, echoed it, and I think it deserves to be echoed. No current secondary student mm -hmm. in French on the Jefferson Dow side or the German on the Midland uh, Northeast side is going to be impacted by this. It's only the future enrollees into that secondary level, which matches the, as Brian said, the flow of our student count also. So I just want to make sure everybody's very clear about that, that you know, if, if somebody's out there in a the building thinking their sophomore at Dow High who's in their third year of French is gonna now have to start going to, to Midland next week, that's not the case. Okay, that all said, let's move into a vote. All in favor of the major change proposal say aye. 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 Opposed? It sounded unanimous. Move on to the next agenda item, finance facilities and operations. And our study committee chair is. No, it would have it, been. It would have been. John, would have been you know, John, I yeah. believe we did not meet Correct. in December. Yeah. Okay, so we so, don't have one. Right. So we don't have to yes. worry about that. Um, so I'll hand it over to Bob. Must be the season because good news in front of you is about a page worth. Mm -hmm. I see that. At, uh, while we get many gifts, this is about the longest list I can remember in quite a while. And I won't read them all, but if you look at the 261 and 62 for information, it really represents all the different types of gifts that we get and all the different kinds of items and donors, if you look at it, all the way from foundations to individual uh, uh, people in the community who give for various reasons. So you'll notice. Uh, in 6 1, those are all items that were uh, donated to us from tools for the uh, first robotics team, uh, pianos, uh, different instruments up there, drum set, etc. And then going down through the other gifts that you see there, uh, total $19,001.74. And there's uh, everything from uh, Dow Chemicals Community Gifts Fund, where our uh, teams actually kind of go out and earn the money by doing community service and then Dow rewards them with that money to, like I said, the money for uh, activity fee scholarships for students to participate um, from individuals. So there's quite a wide range of gifts that you see there this month. And in fact, if I could take you down to 6.3 for action tonight, 
There are two gifts totaling 16,453 that are above the limits so you need to approve these. The first one is $6,753. That's from the Vinland High Athletics Boosters for uh, fall tournament fees. And the other one is $9,700 for uh, soccer shelters, which are like the benches and the and a bus stop almost <laughs> for plastic those go over and saves them from the weather. So I, I would need some action on that first before we get to six four. So okay. can we approve them together? Yeah, we can. If somebody cares to move them together, you so can. So I that. move we approve um, item six point three, the MPF, MHS Athletic Booster Club um, fees for fall tournaments and soccer shelters. Support. Got movement support for 6.3. Any discussion on 6.3 itself? You know, I was talking to uh, Mike earlier tonight about how booster clubs used to um, raise money for the extras, the extra things to help support the sports programs. And more and more we're seeing that the booster clubs are raising money to, to help keep the sports programs alive and vibrant. And I think we owe a big thanks to the booster clubs in um, in raising those funds and donating them back to the programs um, to see tournament fees uh, as part of what they're supporting is, is pretty impressive. Very true. Well said. Any other comments on 6 3? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it and the thank yous have it. Now we move on to 6.4. Yeah, 6.4 is the purchase of uh, Middle and High Music Uniforms. And what you'll notice here is that this is part of that Looking, looking Sharp Fund, so it's a uh, fund that was developed just for this reason. Uh, Middle and High is the, going ahead and ordering uh, replacement concert uniforms. Uh, that was up enough money, as you can see, for $29,919.26 wow. uh, that they needed to get quotes from uh, three vendors and then go through the process of determining which one of those uh, made the most sense. And we, we were provided some of that literature subject in the code to describe why that happens. So we need to approve that uh, purchase of $29,000. I'll accept the motion. So moved. So moved by Lynn. Support? Support. Support by Scott. Comments and questions? Just thank you to all, so many people that have donated to keep this fund alive and um, we'll keep our our uh, music students dressed in great uniforms for years to come yeah i'd like to applaud them as pam applauded the athletic boosters I, I to me they're six of one half does the other in terms of what they're doing and how they're doing it the the whole looking sharp fund and its predecessor on instruments was, is fantastic and just applaud all those booster parents for what they're doing on these programs they, it's great. Uh, we couldn't do it without them, and just thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, that said, moving to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it again. <clears throat> thank you. We'll move on to human resources. I do not think we have an HR committee meeting minutes with Scott. We do. Uh, we had a meeting on Thursday, December 11th. 2014 at 4.30 p.m. Uh, members present were myself, Lynn Baker, Jerry Wasserman, Michael Sherrill, Gary Verlindi, and Cynthia Marchese. Um, we discussed a couple different topics. Uh, one, we discussed a work workers' compensation case, um, uh, kind of vaguely. Ms. Marchese informed the committee of a settled workers' comp case. Uh, in terms of grievances, we heard a grievance filed by the MCEA. Additionally, Ms. Marchese informed the committee of a Masespa grievance and negotiations. We met with the uh, the district. I'm sorry, met with the Midland City Education Association on December 10th, 2014. Our next meeting date is to be determined. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, to Scott? Seeing none, we'll move on. No, I'll hand it off. Mr. Cooper's going to do Mr. Villendi. He is out sick today. He, mm -hmm. had to, we, he had to go to the hospital, so he's had. Uh, I think he's got that flu thing. So. Well, I'll start with we have two staff members who have announced their retirement, effective as dates indicated there. Uh, first one is Ms. Ramona B. Jones, a teacher at Northeast Middle School, with the effective date of April 1st, 2015. And the second one is Mr. Gary Villendi, assistant superintendent, effective June 30th. 
And if he were here, we would make some adroit comments, but we will save those for a future date. <laughs> well, I'll make a comment about how old I am, because I think I had Miss Reed one of her first years teaching, and if she's retiring now, <laughs> I think that makes me pretty old. <laughs> so. She brought a lot, of, she brings a lot of energy to the classroom. She'll be missed. Yeah, she sure will. The second you started to say we've had some of our uh, past uh, staff members uh, pass away here just lately. Uh, we'd extend our deepest sympathy to their families. We had Mr. Charles Brown, who was a math teacher at Northeast Intermediate for 35 years. Uh, Mr. Robert Christensen, um, he was an assistant principal and history teacher at Northeast and Central for 37 years. Uh, Newell Pennell, who passed away uh, on December 14th. He worked for Midland Public Schools for 32 years, both at Midland High as a, a media technician and librarian and a teacher at Northeast. Uh, Joseph uh, Posco, who uh, was a head custodian here at the Administration Center and State Street Building for 32 years. And Catherine Zorn passed away on December 19th, and she was a paraprofessional at Woodcrest Elementary for more than 35 years. And our condolences go out to all those longtime staff members. Yes, they do. Oh. Next item on the agenda is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. You see the letter writers listed there under FOIA requests listed there. You see, uh, more importantly for your calendars, please put these in your calendars. Uh, they're scheduled uh, meetings going forward that we just approved in the organizational meeting. And that opens us up to study discussion session. And I'll start to my right with Scott. Okay. Um, briefly, uh, thank you to my fellow board members for everything that you guys do. I know we all have hectic schedules and busy lives, but um, it is truly a pleasure serving with you all and, and moving our district forward. Thank you. One of the best parts of the job are getting these letters. Um, I got a handful of them here and from Carpenter. And it was great to know that what we do, we are all, to quote uh, Ray Norton, we're all appreciated. <laughs> and uh, these, these letters are great. They're really a, a pleasure to read. Um, congratulations to our shining stars, Beth and Chuck. And as far as our gifts go, you know, it's just, it's always a, a humbling display of our, our community's generosity um, in helping us get to where we need to be. So that's all I've got. Very good. A big thank you, yes, for the letters and recognition for <clears throat> the school board. That was uh, pretty nice. Um, my thoughts and prayers go out to Thomas Saunders and his family and um, hopes that he can recover um, and has good luck on his long recovery. Um, also, thoughts on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day and uh, just I, it makes me think about uh, not too long ago we had four students come up and ask us about um, sometime in the future maybe having Martin Luther King Day off so it'll be interesting to see uh, where that goes as well. I'm looking forward to more and more bond proposal presentations. I've enjoyed several with Jerry and Mike and um, uh, hope that all are getting the information that they're seeking and um, I think there's going to be more articles in the paper so that'll be good forthcoming. I'm always blown away by the amount of money that's given in this community. It's one of the things that when I first moved to Midland I thought this was a very generous community and you look at the gifts every time we gather for a board meeting and there are always just lots of uh, Lots of giving out there and things that really help our school to, to be as great it is, as it is. So thank you. Angela. All right. Um, first of all, good luck to all the students who are in the middle of final exams right now. Um, I know a lot of studying going on at my house. Um, I really appreciate the Dow High students and parent coming tonight to um, talk to us. and. Um, just that all this is very hard when we have to make decisions like this. This wasn't the first time that we've had to um, end classes in the district just because the numbers don't um, support them anymore, not because we don't see value in them. It's just it's a, everything's a choice. Um, thank you very much for the book. Um, last year we got books too and this fall I think I said at a board meeting um, my neighbor texted me across the street because her son had checked out the book with my name in it um, who's a kindergartner and so that was really neat she's like we got a book with your name in the front um, on the bond proposal as this keeps going out um, 
please, if people have questions, if they question something that we're doing, please ask to get an answer to a question. Don't just make assumptions. Um, there's a lot, a lot of thought that went into what um, is included in this bond proposal. And so if you're questioning something, please ask. Please ask and get clarification, and then please um, go and vote. And the last thing is I'd like to welcome Patrick. Thank you. Glad that you're joining us on the board. Right. So I'll turn it over to you. <clears throat> this is my first uh, new night, as Angela said, and I just thank you everybody for the help and support in the fall to be elected, and I'm uh, very appreciative. And I don't have much tonight, but I will will work hard and do my best to support the schools and what's, <clears throat> what's right for the students and the schools going forward. And just seeing, I expect that there's gifts every meeting is what I'm understanding here. <laughs> what uh, we have going on here. <clears throat> you said it was unpaid. Um, <laughs> again, I, was, I too was struck by the donations and looking at the minutes and seeing all that was given uh, th towards the end of last year. And it is, uh, it makes me, it makes me happy to see. It's kind of gives you a little bit of faith that there are good things going on too, but the good things don't get published enough. It's <clears throat> almost sometimes it's the bad stuff that gets the publicity. So uh, that's all I had. But thank you. Uh, I look forward to being here. Thank you. Okay. Well, I too welcome you, Patrick. I look forward to many more years. Well, for you to be on the board. I had the opportunity to run for a one-year term to see how I liked it, and 13 years later, I'm <laughs> here. So, um, but I have to say. Um, being a school board member is probably at the top of my list of my volunteer duties and different things I've been involved in, impacting children, not my own, but just my own, but many other people's and generations to come. It, it is very fulfilling, it, and uh, even through the hard times, uh, like we said, we don't always hear about all the good things until you hear students come and talk and see, you know, the impact that their classes have made on them. Uh, just not academically, but in their presentation, their their life skills. Wow, I, I'm always amazed when we have students that um, present here or in the arts or on the field or wherever it is that we they are so poised and have given given uh, more than just an academic education. Um, let's see. Thank you for the book. Um, I just love these, and I know the book that. We got last year, I went out and bought for gifts because it was so <laughs> cute. And I think I might just do that too with these little humans. Um, they will, students will enjoy that. And uh, the letters were great. I actually um, met this Julie Hyatt's class last week. I volunteer with Dibbles and I happened to have her fourth grade class last week. And are they a great group of, of kiddos? But um, I had to laugh as I went my, through my little pile here and, and talking about how we spend our money. I think every one of them said, thank you for the iPads. <laughs> but one went back to the simple things as well, said thank you for everything you do, and most of all, thank you for the iPads. But one little guy said, markers, paper, books, <laughs> and iPads. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, And I think being in the school's kind of uh, Jumping off of what Angela said, I'm seeing little orange signs all over now. So when you, when you mm -hmm. said, you know, what is the bond, um, if you have questions on the bond or, or what is it for, boy, a good start is to go by the schools and, and see those little orange signs and then ask, you know, ask if you're in the buildings, you know, what they mean or what's going on because there are a lot of exciting, a lot of exciting things. They're basic things, but they're exciting things for our schools that uh, go along with the bond. and. Uh, students, exams, but in a couple of days you've got a great a couple of days to enjoy a break. So enjoy that time and uh, that's all. Okay, a few comments. Thank you for all the parents and students' comments on the language, particularly tonight. Um, you know, is it going to be different? Yes. Um, but what, here's where I take comfort. No current student that's in language is going to be impacted. It's a delivery change. It's the only change. That change uh, is going to allow maximum opportunity for kids in that change. That looking forward, we're gonna see even more opportunities for kids in our current number of languages vis-a-vis -vis delivery changes that are gonna allow that to happen. So when I see all that, that makes me comfortable with where we're taking this and where we're going for the long term. So uh, that's where I get the vote I get. 
to Beth and Chuck, who are no longer here tonight, uh, congratulations. I particularly, if so I was Chuck, I would be flying cloud nine tonight to know one of my work people, who I may not even know who it was, said, wow, about me. And then we can say, wow, about me. I've had a good day. And uh, to all of you, um, in the last couple of years serving as president, uh, I just appreciate how much you've helped support all this and, and do all this. And while everybody's thanking us all as board members, I have a special place in my heart for all of you and what you've done to support the schools and support me in all of this. So thank you very much. And lastly, as the students write their letters, I do have to quote one because it's beyond cute. It's actually, it's actually heartwarming. Um, this is the very best gift you can give us, you. You and your partners can do anything if you put your minds to it. Uh, by giving us learning tools and great possibilities in our minds that could help us succeed in life and change the world. And don't worry, we will thank you by the iPads. <laughs> <laughs> P.S. I know I will do great things in the world. I want to be one of you Aww. someday. <laughs> so wow. I think oh, I'll frame so that one. <laughs> so with that, I'll turn it over to Mike. I don't think I found that one. Yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if you recall last year, uh, about this time of year, actually a little later probably, we put some pressure on Brian but to put it together, but um, we were looking at um, adding that IB PYP preschool program. And so it's up and running and, and going pretty strong. Um, something else that I think we need to be and I've been looking at um, an option that some more parents are looking for is, is um, a young fives program, for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at this point in time, we have uh, been able to secure a room at Carpenter, which I think could fit well, being that um, Carpenter is one of our title buildings with some at-risk students. And so um, we are in the process of um, trying to put that together and make sure that happen, happens going forward and giving that option to parents. We're not 100%. But we're, I think we're we're going to move that forward, and, and so Brian, we got Brian off and running again, working with low <laughs> people um, on young fives. Young fives, for lack of better words, we use a, we may use that terminology, but really, it's parents need to go, go know going in. It's really you're committing to two years of kindergarten. We'll do that that one kindergarten with a little different pace, a little different curriculum, and then uh, the regular kindergarten the following year. So they're committing to doing that because they, they feel like their child's not ready for kindergarten at that time. And so um, uh, we're, we're moving that way going forward. On the bond, um, we've done a number of presentations. I think today, uh, out of the 50 some I've done, today was a very rewarding one. And I think the League of Women Voters, because, you know, first one I went over, um, uh, I know it's quite a few people going in the library, and I wasn't at first going, you know, you always kind of go, oh, boy, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing I'm walking into, you know. <laughs> and we had an amazing sized crowd in there, yep. which, again, someone who's been here 18 months just uh, blows me away that at 1 o'clock or 1230 in the afternoon, we had that many interested citizens to show up to find the information out. Now, many of them had heard many things. And, and, but they still showed up to find out the exact information from us on that day to make their decision. And I'm, I, and I'm just glad they did that and they can go make their decision either way. But um, at that point to get that information correctly. So I, I enjoyed it and I think it was a, a very informational session today. We've, we've done um, about 50 of them at this point. We'll finish right around 60. And so, if we, you know, when people I had someone kind of say, hey, maybe you're not getting your message out there. And I, and I almost want to say to people, I do say to the people who tell me that, what is it you suggest we do more of? Because um, I think we first talked about this a year ago, and Roger probably wrote about it a year ago, and then he wrote about it last summer, and then he wrote about it again this fall. We've had uh, other information in the paper. We've done 60 presentations. It's on our website. It's all over that. We talk about it at every board meeting. Um, if the information's not gathered, then you haven't seeked it. And, we, and so I'm feeling pretty good at least we, we have given it our full effort to make sure everyone fully understands the purpose and why we've done this. Because there are some pieces in there that are not easily defined in a few sentences of why we are doing that, um, particularly the whole um, restructuring from 19 buildings down to 11 buildings and what that takes us going forward. So a lot of work still to do. We have a month to go. And so I think I'm about ready to put a countdown clock on the website for all of us to realize we're in the countdown. And if you're, you're a football fan, 
You you saw yesterday with the mm. Packers oh. give away one in the in the last quarter here. So we need to keep doing the right things and getting the word out and educate everyone before February 24th. Absentee ballots. Uh, Cindy got our first uh, readout of how many people have turned in absentee ballots. At this point, it's huge. Mm. And so let's, let's continue. Obviously, that's a growing number of people who are going to vote absentee, and we need to make sure we have they have the right information as well to go forward. I, I did um, get the opportunity to attend a very nice conference. It's always very nice because it's in Florida, and I do do that on my own dime. It's something that um, my mentor had talked me into many years ago to go to, and um, I can remember telling him, I don't have the money to do that. And he used to tell me, you have to do those things for yourself to continue to learn and grow. And um, so I did. The, I, I do attend this uh, conference. It's called Midwest Suburban Superintendent. So it's it, it's superintendents of school districts like our size throughout the Midwest um, who meet together. About 75 of us, twice a year. Um, it's nice and small enough that you can learn from each other and you can have that discussion going forward. And something um, it was ironic while we were getting some emails about foreign language. Um, we had a presentation from Minnetonka, Minnesota, and if you get a chance to look that school district up, um, the superintendent from there is, is, a, is a legend. He's like in his 52nd year of being a superintendent, not, not education, being a superintendent. And, wow. um, and, and he is legendary, meaning um, at 52 years old, he's moving this district beyond anywhere I've ever seen. Um, at some point, I'm probably going to talk to you that I think we need to send a, t send a team out there and watch some things they're doing. I'll go since my yeah. brother lives there. They're doing <laughs> man, man <laughs> and <February>. immersion <laughs> program. It's an option for parents, not all students, but you can choose to have your students immersed in Mandarin and learn from the start. He's got great data to show those students are still achieving at a high level, even though they're being taught in a second language in that class. Um, something else he's created is he's created a culture of innovation. And, and you think about that for us, um, who we do take six months to do a major change proposal. Nothing wrong with that, but sometimes it stifles a little bit of innovation. And so we're behind on um, blended learning. Um, sometimes success, as an old coach, success is the enemy of innovation. Um, I always thought my hardest job, I used to tell people when I won the state championship in 1993 and 1994, I opened uh, the polls of the USA Today as number one in the nation, and, and I started season five and five. And, and it was because it, nothing's harder to keep on top when you're, or you're on top, you know. And so for MPS, I think maybe we need to explore that innovation and how do we create the culture of innovation within our own school district. And it's incredible how they've created that and what they're doing there. And so very similar demographic community to ourselves in Minnesota so something that we can look at something I picked up out of there as well so excellent thought I'd share that with you I'm glad you learned something you can bring back yes always pick up something and and we will not go to Minnetonka in February right no. <laughs> I, I spent Christmas there last year Neg negative 20 was nothing <laughs> But you're right about the innovation, Mike. It's 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 it, success can be the enemy of innovation. Correct. You oftentimes, you have to gore your own ox, and that's hard to do. Yep. So, any other comments for the good of the order? Seeing none, we'll stand adjourned.